What do you want me to talk about? An artist talk is absurd. It's just a lifetime if you're truly invested in it. What do you want me to say? I could tell you that my routine has been the same since I can remember. Waking up, getting dressed, writing. The only difference is I don't put a tutu on. Maybe sometimes. I suppose, though, when it began as a, in quotes, career, or maybe what I mean to say is when I realized I could and I should take this seriously as my entire life, whether it's a profession or an existence, was not very long ago, some years ago, that is, when I went through One of many, I suppose, I must confess. But one particularly traumatic moment. Wherein I remember the physical side of the pain was at one point so great. I couldn't decide what was pain and what was pleasure and then after that I remember my cousin and I my late cousin and I connected we really connected over that I mean in the in that time leading up to it we had connected over other things but but it was Christmas day And I found myself telling her about that. We had had a bit of a fight. Not long before that, we never fought. She was always my hero when I was a kid. She was some years older, but always young, uniquely. Anyhow. I'm not going to tell you why we had had a spat. I just realized that wasn't her. And so I think given how much younger I was, coming to that conclusion for myself, actually I think it was quite a profound moment. Because she was an addict, and the things that had happened to her from a young age upwards were terrible. I think anybody who could live as long as she did, exist as long as she did, and fight as much as she did, and try as hard as she did to get better, probably deserves an award. But that's in part coming from a place where I sometimes wonder how I can get through the day mostly wonder no maybe that's not true you'll never know and so we confided in something and it felt like a breath had been released and then I was preparing for a show I was doing all these flowers not fully understanding why I had been interested in in, in environmental art which is to say work exploring environmental and ecological degradation. It had started looking at animal rights because I had adopted my dog from a puppy mill. And it went more into an exploration of plants. And now, at this point, because that has continued, that theme of the environment... I look more at waste, particularly to do with food waste and packaging waste, which I continue to do. And I was painting at that time these flowers and Dad called and he said, Oh, Justine's died. When my aunt found her, she was on the other side of the door. She'd been trying to get out and she was still warm. 
Some people say an overdose is actually a suicide and last year I spent a long time examining what a suicide is because in fact a suicide could be a lifetime. We could live a suicide. But she wasn't. She wanted. She hadn't. She had died before. She didn't want to die then. And I found myself intensely interested in exploring, examining symbols, sometimes from religions, not always, sometimes from oh, ancient and historic concepts of witchcraft. I was interested in redemption and resurrection. I did portraits of Justine, and the first portrait I did, resurrection symbol against this red background was, I think, probably the beginning of where I am now. I listened to a lot of Patti Smith and I painted. But it was only one song. It was pissing in a river in part because I kept thinking, God, Justine could have choreographed and then danced to this and it would have been... It would have been something else. And that was when I realized that I had always had this interest not only in environmental problems and waste and and then story and symbol but portraiture because a portrait is a symbol and it is a story it's a symbol of a person's narrative and one must use certain symbolic tools even if it's as simple as the background color or an actual symbol like these shells or flowers that I have kept throughout in my work to this day and it's a dialogue, a symbolic dialogue, perhaps. Maybe I'm stretching the definition of what the word symbol means, but between dialogue between the artist and the sitter, because it's this narrative of the sitter and it's the artist's narrative. From then I took on a more intense interest in portraiture which developed into a look at the stories of three women in my family in particular and narrative became at times the specific or unique narratives of these women at other times narratives from myth and historic text that I believed represented themes that I picked up on across and linking each of these women and now the themes that I focus specifically on as an artist are trauma, addiction, consent and nostalgia. I think about Justine every day. For a while, I think, without realizing, maybe I became Justine. Until I started to become Patty. Patty's on my father's side. And that interest in waste returned, but not in terms of the environment, more in terms of a person and their life, an inability to heal trauma, a nostalgia for something that's gone that seemed like a better time that one knows can never come back, just like Justine. And reclaiming materials, reclaiming materials to reclaim a life, a narrative, and to rejuvenate something that's dead. So in becoming Patty, I paint her less than I use material to understand how 
through these materials that I'm reclaiming, I can become this character who in fact becomes now more of a concept than a person. Her narrative is not only her own, it's that of three women. And so I'm looking at this painting that I did in the fall, Prologue. And it's called Prologue because it's as much a culmination of these years of working that I've described as it is a beginning. And I say beginning not because I'm suddenly realizing, oh, now I know how to paint or now I know what the story is. It, it's more beginning in that there is understanding, a full understanding between why I use the materials I use and why I focus on the themes that I focus on and why I focus on the women that I focus on. And I'm thinking... I'm thinking about Justine and how she smelled. It made me think of flowers in the ocean. And I'm thinking about how it's very difficult, really, to have an artist talk because I know what I'm doing. Now I have a certain new level of understanding. But what I often find is that these paintings are, are me. I may tell you I've become Patty and I've become Justine, but really they've become me. It's only when I step back and look at something that I see as much as it was to many levels, to many degrees, that is intentional to paint the way I do. And it's not based on somebody else. Whether you like my method or not, it's something I simply found myself developing. I was drawn towards a certain method and I believe in nurturing my natural line and that was what appeared to be, to put it simply, happening. Which is to say, when I put a pen or a pencil to paper, when I put a brush to a panel or a canvas, instinctively I moved in a certain way. And it's these layers that reveal and conceal. And I think it's about protecting Justine and protecting Patty. But also it's about protecting myself. You see, I look at these women and I see what we all have in common. When you're a woman and you don't fit in and you're smart, I don't care what anybody says. You're bullied and you're pushed around and you're abused. And people find excuses why it's okay. Simple people who on the outside seem like they're nice. And what bothers me is seeing how that ultimately killed Justine and other women. This sense of isolation. I have a fear of becoming them. Falling victim. And it's not a sign of weakness. It's just a cruel reality. what it's like to finally feel with the bullying and the gossip, the thousands of little fires that unkind people set while all the while pretending that they're not bad because they fit in and they resent that you don't. Maybe they're jealous. Succumbing to it, the pressure of that isolation. That's why Justine, 
is always more or less alone in any portrait. And that's why now my interest in portraiture is really very much about depicting family legacies. There's something solid about a legacy put, put on a panel of a family. So that's something I will be working towards, continuing to, to do. And I find myself wanting to go back to making paintings of Justine. Because as I've said, I don't really believe Patty belongs in paintings. But Justine does. And so now I find myself at a point in my career where I'm returning to these nascent, shall I say, moments that I had as an artist, wanting to depict the same people, maybe even the same poses, but with greater understanding. And so I suppose that's really what my artist talk is about, because it's absurd to think that anyone can really talk about their practice just as much as obviously any artist will be, whether they like it or not, required to do so. That's the, I suppose that's, well, I won't say it. It's just one of many realities. But it is a return. It's a return. It's a form of nostalgia in action. So my artist talk is really about explaining how I've come to an understanding. And how I move forward. <laughs>